the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified after you would have healed oh God delivered torn someone's decade old challenge overnight I'm satisfied just to see you glorified Lord, every time people say me, let it be that they mean you. Every time they say it is Joshua Selman, let it be that they truly meant to say you. Jesus, the son of the living God. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified my desire has never been to be a preacher my desire has never been to be a celebrity no. all of these things mean absolutely nothing absolutely nothing all that I desire with my life is that God can find a space through this vessel and bring glory to the name of his son and I'm telling you if that happens I am completely satisfied this mundane pursuit of so many things that's not it at all I sang this song from the depth of my heart it's not just something you pretend because you're on stage it's, it's been my passion to see that the mighty things that God would do even tonight, that it would not just be the promoting of the name of a man. As inevitable as that may look, but that behind all of this, my desire is to see Jesus, to see him glorified and his name be lifted. That for me, it's an honor already to be the vessel to be used by God and let me teach you something please listen if you're a man of God here please listen this is a miracle service conquer the addictiveness of fame and power conquer it it's a beautiful experience to be on the other side of the applause on the other side of the commendations it's a wonderful thing but if you do not conquer the deception that comes with that lust to be known to be famous you will never go far with God pray as far as you can pray fast as far as you can fast read the bible for as long as you can read but if that heart condition that circumcision does not happen you will never go far with god i believe with all my heart that this is a word already for someone you know most times when people see god um, doing mighty things through men 
the celebration that comes with results begins to whet the appetite of their lusts and they think oh dear let me have this opportunity and shine too and prophesy too and pray no. this song must become a an anthem and a desire in your life and i if i be lifted up from the earth he says i will draw all men to myself it is cheaper stepping back and allowing him take his place hallelujah i will just share a few things very briefly and then we'll pray we have a lot to do but the lord just inspired in my heart to challenge us and it's important for us to understand that god I will continue to teach us this the boundary of god's power is his word god is limited by the provisions that his word allows he cannot go outside of the scope of his word in blessing in lifting in delivering whatever it is that he does has to be consistent with the allowance provided for by his word hallelujah and so it, it matters I know that many of us are here we're trusting god to just step in don't worry just 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 calm down and lend your attention let the holy spirit minister very deeply and challenge you because when the word of god listen carefully please when the word of god is not released there is no basis for the power of god to flow are we together now the bible says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of God hides behind his light. And so when the effulgence of that light comes, then his power is ready to be released. The first thing I want to share tonight is, is a word of caution again to just remind us again, number one, that every believer's pursuit and goal is to be like Christ and to reflect him to the world please listen our goal is beyond miracles our goal our pursuit is beyond signs wonders our pursuit is beyond the knowledge of mysteries and principles as powerful as they are it is important for us to understand fundamentally that our pursuit sincerely in this kingdom is number one to become like christ experientially apostle was speaking and he said my little children in whom i travel until christ be formed in you so the formation of christ in a believer and then the ability to reflect christ to the world this should be our highest pursuit so miracles signs wonders methodologies and principles deliverance healings all of these things are subsets and must remain so they are only possibilities that are brought into our lives to the end that we find the comfort and the stability to pursue this one goal to be like Christ and to reflect Christ to the world if we veer off from this ultimate goal then miracles will no longer be a blessing listen carefully prosperity will no longer be a blessing breakthrough of any sort will no longer be a blessing the value the value in receiving the miraculous in prospering receiving restoration breakthrough etc the value is in its ability to contribute to keep you at ease so that you can continue this pursuit of becoming like christ in experience are we together it is very important because it is easy for believers to veer off now because we are humans please you have to listen to this many of us 
seated here right now and many following from around the world online we were buffeted by all kinds of situations and truly let me tell you um the human was not designed to find ease in pain so that that focus to get pain away to get everything that looks like tragedy it can overwhelm your desire to pursue christ you just want the money because you are tired of the embarrassment from landlord you want to know the principles you're tired of being laughed at and so on and so forth you want the miracle you are tired of the pain you are tired of living on drugs you know you want the job you are tired of being limited you want the child you know all of these things they are very legitimate desires but i am saying the real value of the manifestation of the power of god is the revelation of jesus christ through it you have to understand this so all that we do here all that we teach all that we do is an attempt to coordinate our lives and our destinies together by the spirit to the end that when all is said and done more than the knowledge of principles more than the knowledge of formulas and methodologies more than physical results of breakthrough prosperity increase speed and all of these possibilities in the kingdom more than all of this our greatest pride in fact even more than purpose an assignment as it were that we become like christ in experience and then out of the abundance the richness of him that has been formed in us we can reflect that to the world whoever does that is a winner a real winner hallelujah ministries that work in very strong dimensions of the anointing the prophetic healing signs and wonders usually will need to remind themselves every once and again because the charismatism around the move of god and the manifestation of god's power alone can tilt you away from this understanding are we together in a few minutes now god is going to be touching lifting blessing people and all kinds of testimonies will be coming and sometimes we have believers who tabernacle within organizations and spiritual platforms like this for many years they never know God they never have a personal encounter with God their lives do not become reflections of his possibilities with time although they get miracles although they receive impartations although the gifts of the Spirit continue to work in their lives are we together although they will buy cars and houses and build estates although the ministries will move from permanent side to permanent side and increase and expand and become successful in as much as we know success to be but if all of these things happen and they do not point us back to the lord and help us to know him not to know what he can do to know who he is then there is a serious problem is God blessing us today? There are people who will never opt to be born again. They are uninterested in anything that has to do with salvation. They are not interested in God, but they are interested in every other thing aside from salvation. They want the healing power that comes with the kingdom. They want the fame, the increase, the speed. They want the revelation, everything that can come, they desire. But that encounter with the Son of the living God is something that... Um, even ministers are uninterested really they just want the charismatism and the reason is there is an explanation because we are humans we work with our senses and the things that we see and experience is what we can relate with are we together and whoever is the face behind that will have all kinds of benefits financial benefits benefits of fame and influence and loyalty etc so it is it is more rewarding physically to ignore the pursuit of the knowledge of christ and pursue the manifestation of power and miracles 
if someone throws his crutches with blind eyes is open if a deaf ear opens i mean that news will spread five you say someone was saved you say well glory to god as usual but what really happened what people mean i mean what is the wow factor in the meeting we must be spiritual enough to value the power of becoming like christ we must be spiritual enough to see the all surpassing superiority that that pursuit provides above and beyond getting things it is god's desire that our lives become a reflection of christ knowing god and having a personal walk with god is our highest priority write it down please knowing god and having a personal walk with god is the believer's highest pursuit our highest priority is not to end the family crisis please listen if you are not listening to me it's a sign that the devil is distracting you because what i'm saying is very important you will receive the miracles you will receive the signs the wonders the miracles the breakthrough this is for sure but knowing god and having a personal walk with god is our highest priority our highest priority so while i receive the miracle the job the breakthrough the blind eyes opening the deaf ears opening speed coming into my life restoration happening decades of barrenness vanishing overnight infirmities and diseases living just like that more than those things please listen to me the real value is that they now take away the hindrances that can distract my pursuit of knowing God. Are we together? Why do we hate poverty? Not because poverty, um, we hate the role it plays in limiting your knowing God and becoming like him. Why? Because it takes time to know God. It takes time to understand his ways and that same time it takes to know God is what the world demands of you to be able to give you financial stipends so there is a conflict you have your time it can be used to know God or it can be used to pursue wealth all through your lifetime this is why we hate poverty and then because every time you are serving the Lord Caesar will come I've taught you this and demand tribute when you focus to worship god caesar will come and if the way to be a peacemaker in the earth is a formula give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god while you worship god keep caesar's coin because he's coming when he comes give him his coin and caesar will go and you keep worshiping god but the moment you cannot give caesar's tribute you will have to forego your worshiping God to labor to find his coin and give to him. Caesar distracted Jesus and distracted his service. Jesus said, okay, Peter, you have to go fishing. You were supposed to be listening to me. But now that Caesar has come, because it's a law, we have to break this transmission of worship. And sometimes it's not ours, it's your lifetime. Are you getting it now? So by the time I prophesy financial favor or I teach you on the principles of finance, it's not just for money's sake. It is to be able to keep Caesar's gold. And when Caesar knocks the door, you say, carry it, please. I'm focusing on God and destiny. Your tribute is there for you. The disturbance of Caesar is a terrible strategy to take you away from God. Caesar will come as your child's school fees. It will come as all kinds of wicked bills growing geometrically. So to be a peacemaker is to sustain the intelligence and the ability to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and then give to God what belongs to God. 
why do we expose people to the power of God to lift what is there about lifting because you cannot make impact when you are in the pit when Joseph was in the well he remained there we don't know what he was doing down there but one thing we know is that he was not making any impact he was alone when he was brought out and honored in the palace when he was there he was able to salvage his brothers why do we have to prophesy speed are we together the reason is because our, the unit of destiny is time please listen very carefully whatever eats your time has eaten a portion of your life many of us got born again late already you dedicated a major chunk of your life to ignorance and to the service of the devil and now that you are born again there is still the law of process and if you are to follow the law of process in its normal course you will never have the time to know god and serve so god will have to introduce i call them systems of advantage he will bring them into the equation of your destiny to restore time so that in one year god can put 10 years inside one year and then now he can allow you to make progress are we together a woman who has been barren for 10 years already she, she would have had maybe three children at least well spaced and happy even if she has one child she's making progress but restoration has not yet happened to her but when God gives that woman triplets he didn't give her children he took time and brought it back nine months and an experience that was to span nine years he brought it in nine months are we together so i want you to see every miracle and everything that happens to you with respect to its contribution or its inhibition to your knowing god and pursuing him if you remain poor like many people have chosen to the challenge there is that they will not know God and they will stop others from knowing God. If you remain weak and you are not strong, the challenge is one day your body will not be able to host the spirit again and it will leave. Because there is a requisite health condition for the spirit to be able to stay in this body. Your body is your passport to function in this realm. Not your passport to be alive. You don't need the body to be alive, but you need the body to be authorized to function in this dimension of God's kingdom. This is the reason why we agree with people that demonic sicknesses like cancer, like HIV, and all these sicknesses that don't have names, but have symptoms and the pain that they bring. When we agree for people to be touched, it's not just showing that a man of God is anointed. Is a way of saying God is interested in your longevity God is interested in you serving him because those things are dead sentences hallelujah are we together so I want you to see everything that you will receive tonight with respect to its contribution when you see someone getting healed or getting delivered don't look at the rowdiness of the process. Rejoice with that person because something is happening to that person that will grant him or her the ease to serve God now. Are we together now? Our messages must be central and eventually. Remember the formula in, in the days of Moses. There were serpents, but there was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And that the condition was that if you set your gaze on that one, you will survive this one. In any case, you must look at the serpents. You can choose to look at the one that is on the ground there or look at the one lifted. Are we together now? And that anyone who stayed there, ignoring all of these things and stayed there, that person was saved. Healing is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Deliverance is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Prosperity, a job, increase, all kinds of miracles, they are pointless if they do not lead to Christ. 
so it's important for every one of us to get this number two the second thing I would say tonight is the fallacy listen carefully we must conquer the fallacy of trying to do what we have not become the futility of attempting to live out a lifestyle that has not been captured in our paradigm and our mindsets listen very carefully it is futile to attempt to do things any lifestyle that your mindset cannot host is not yours this is very powerful listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call it deliverance through transformation many believers listen to me very carefully now there are people who do not believe that the idea and the concept of deliverance even exists it does it truly does the only balance is that casting out a spirit or an influence as i always teach is not the end of it now please we need africa we need to hear this because um we many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of god says i can cast out a spirit out of a man the influences can leave you spirits not only stay in men a spirit can stay in a business a spirit can stay in your it doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man mm -mm. man is their most preferred habitation but not the only habitation spirits can stay in a business they can stay anywhere anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits they can stay in a challenge a challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there are we together now now but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom the other part is that you must be transformed please say transformed when jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 and then luke chapter 4 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings listen carefully to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted are we together and then he said to set the captives free he had sent me to proclaim one of the versions who say proclaim deliverance there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted it is through the accurate dispensing of the word of god that means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension then your lifestyle follows suit are we together now it is futile to try to do things any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking believers a major part of our growth is in the realm of the mind you have to know this it's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind to meticulously mentor believers into understanding usually they think it is weakness a major part of the ministry of jesus was dedicated in mentorship in fact he did not finish the curriculum when he resurrected he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave their growth happened principally through his the mentorship of the word he started in matthew chapter 5 the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom this is how we function in this kingdom when they embraced it then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit that means the ministry of the holy spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation there is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation but the richer part of the ministry of the holy spirit is seen when we are transformed not before we are transformed 
the primary role of the Holy Spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign. That's his primary assignment. And then to convict and so on and so forth. The richness of his ministry, the potentials of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed. That means if we are not transformed, we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as can be seen in us. Most people think when the Holy Spirit comes, he just continues to transform you and then that's... No, 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 no. Transformation has an end. Are we together now? That means you should be able to attain onto a level of commendable maturity where the Holy Spirit says, now we can do business together. You have risen to a realm where I can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly. Transformation is powerful. Many believers will not contend for transformation. And there is a consequence. If you do not contend for transformation, the, the, the consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty. Remember that the spirits don't need to only come. See, listen, let me tell you. Come, um, Dr. Mecca, look at this. This gentleman can, I can speak over his life prophetically. Watch this. And within the space of two, three days, even one day, this man can receive a million naira, two million naira. Now, he has not prospered. That blessing is to help him to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men. Because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held. The money is not in his mind. So he, he is not his own. It was a loan that was given to him prophetically. It becomes his when the money is in his mind. So he can hold on to that and say, Ah, apostle is powerful. And after two months, the, the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle. Are we together now? Because he does not know the ways of God allocated for the increase and the sustenance of resources. Inevitably, no matter how careful he, used that, he uses that money, it must finish and must leave him. It's not an attack, it's the law. I've taught you. Because his growth does not allow this kind of result. Prophecy routed a way of bringing it to help him fast. But because transformation was not there, it must leave him. Now, when it leaves him, he will come back again and say, Apostle, I brought 10,000 like that day. And I will still speak. I will say now in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. This time around, it doesn't matter how much comes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's 100,000 or 10 million, he's still in trouble. He's not free. Are we together now? So it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business, this man's life, and so on and so forth. I'm just using this as an example. Now, after I take authority over that spirit, the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place, a place of habitation. Not finding any, the spirit will advise itself. I will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house. He's still calling the man. That means you remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free. It finds the house swept, clean, but empty. And then the Bible says it gathers seven others. Jesus is teaching here now. That means this is how the realm of the spirit works. And returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former. And because of his ignorance, he will say the man of God is fake. The man of God is not fake. You are not transformed to sustain the miracle. Are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from? At least you, were in a, you, you, you had a house. After the breakthrough, now you don't even have a house again. And you say, ah, I don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works 
in this church or in this ministry or somewhere. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But now imagine with me that God steps in over Dr. Emeka's life. Are we together? And then the Lord blesses him, still using the finance that, that, that I'm giving an illustration around. And this guy now, God blesses him. And he decides to say now that at least one million has come. My destiny is bigger than one million. But one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent. Are we together? And just sort out my children now. I can, even if I can't pay everything, I can pay first term. I can rest. While he's doing that, he now subjects himself and says, Do you know what? I want to find out God's ways. The ways are located for the prosperity of the saints. And he begins to gather these teachings. While he's listening, do you know what he's doing? He's closing the door. This guy is prospering not when he's doing business, when he is fortifying his mindset so that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again. To preach deliverance to the captives. Many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house. Now, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I would not do that. From church to church, from apostle to apostle, prophet to prophet, pastor to pastor, in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring. Are we together now? Yes. We will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong. Notice, no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy, he loses it through ignorance. Prophecy brings it. Ignorance. When the devil marks that you have this stronghold, he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming. This is how Satan mocks many men of God across Africa. Before they pray, the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back. He studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold. The door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. And the spirit says, I can stroll around. The service will soon finish. And I will route through just one door of ignorance. And I'm back to the life, back to the business. Are we together? Very, very powerful. So this gentleman, as he's transformed, something is happening to him. You will find out prophecy. Now You will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance, as you would call it. It will show in his transformation. So he can return and say, 10 years ago, watch this, once upon a time, I was poor or I was weak or I was under all kinds of yokes and all of that. Then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of God, comma, and then I subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of God and the Holy Ghost, the more I expanded my spiritual capacity, the more his potential, the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me. Now look at my life. I'm a testimony from here to here. I never want this place to just become a place of miracles. Ah, there's a service, so let's go. You will be healed. You will be blessed. I agree. But I, I disagree that you will be sustainably blessed, sustainably healed, sustainably lifted, except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight, you must contend for knowledge. This kingdom is knowledge-based. And not any kind of knowledge. You are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear. No, there is a body of truth already allocated. You are not given the luxury of inventing what you want. It may not be comfortable to your, your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you. Listen, you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of God, not the one that looks pleasant to you, doctrinally speaking. If you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory, to walk in the fullness of the victorious life, then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one 
Now, you already know that this guy is in trouble. There is a reason why he's thought that, as uncomfortable as this. You have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say, I, I may not like it. It doesn't, I mean, who would want to touch a cadaver? Who would want to walk with a dead body? Who would want to keep giving people injections all around? I mean, these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things. Who would want to do that? But you have to do it. That's the only way the, uh, what the what's inside that? The um, drug will get into your body. There's no Bluetooth for it. It has to go directly. <laughs> Are we together? So, this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection. You have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort. And you endure the thing and receive it for a few days. And after that, you are fine. This is it. It's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe, that means that, um, by, let me explain what I mean. The believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results. Isn't it funny? That believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say, no, 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 no. Um, I don't like this. I like this. I don't like this. It's pride. The Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy, flattery in religion, and will never produce results. The value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept prayer does not just work generically regardless of your obeying other principles it's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer god must be answering spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of God. If you choose a dimension and leave the rest. So we have people who are always praying. Always delivering something. Always casting out demons. Now please, I, I, I don't say it with, with, a, with a heart of sarcasm at all. Don't, don't find offense in any way. This way, you will never become a portrait of the victory of Christ. It will never truly happen. It was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever. What then is the excellency of the finished work of Christ? Then on the other hand, we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free. Oh boy. And their lives continue to show that this is not correct. When they are sick, they don't say Christ paid for my sickness. They go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right. The possibility of sickness, the possibility of defeat, no matter how temporal, is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint. But it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest. And people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave. Are we together? I shall not die. You are deteriorating. No, no, God forbid. I know that I'm fine. You are going down. You are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares. You finish praying immediately and lie down. The spirit says, he's asleep now. Let's continue. And you get up and say, I didn't see anything. You are joking there. Until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again. There is something called the death of a fool. It is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance. We must embrace the whole counsel of Christ. If you did not prosper by default, then you will not stay healthy by default. 
you will not stay delivered by default it has to be engaged through growth they are stabilizers they provide the dimensions of your stability if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You must know the truth and know it enough to set you free. Are we blessed? I wrote something down here. Our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways, the principles, the methodologies of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just, a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you're in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again. Your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. It takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life. It says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation. When you know God and encounter him, he will expose you to his ways. It is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your Christian life. Are we together? Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Thank you, Mecca. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wherefore, Say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage, 
and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty acts. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged. However, it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged. Listen very carefully. It, while it is true that it is not a, the best reflection of the Zoe life, if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life, it is the flawlessness, the dexterity, the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of God. However, because the treasure is in earthen vessels, it is also not unusual. Please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged. God, in his dealings with men, knew that there will always be room here and there. Are we together? For the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ. And so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um, it says but the Lord this is your advantage Many are the afflictions of an unbeliever, but he will remain there because he does not have the Lord as his anchor. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the Lord who can deliver him out of them all. Out of them all. So the embarrassment is not the challenge. Listen, believers. Stop allowing challenges to make you feel I'm not a Christian. Maybe it's because I did not pray. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The Bible tells us that many are the afflictions. So it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivered him. So God is a deliverer. He delivers. He delivers him. What is deliverance? I've taught you. Deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits. No. It's the parting away. Separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress. It's called deliverance. The moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress. Be it demonic be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues, while that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down, while that is happening, and he sits and feels bad, and some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear, it's just because you don't know God your life. No, no, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie. 
that means when you find yourself in that situation the revelation of the fact that the lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort um, comfortable are we together don't find comfort in that situation you get up and begin to press the woman with the issue of blood knew she understood that she was a daughter of abraham the one who was took uh, you know bound she did not know but this one knew so she could not heal herself but she was already rehearsing oh jesus should come around this place as soon as jesus came she knew already she pressed and touched the helm of his garment never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of god the victorious life your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the the reality of the victory of christ i love naaman the bible says naaman was the captain of the syrian army he says he was a very valiant man so in one aspect of his life he was doing exceptionally well then the bible says but he was leprous and i'm sure naaman just said oh at least i'm a captain it's all right i can live my life like that but a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction she said oh that my lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something praying about it reading about it there's there has if you are at ease when things are not going well it's a sign that you are not a serious believer it is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself but you should sit down and say look where do you know that god is moving where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i've read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i've not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom you see that now he does not know what to do but one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of god listen my brothers and my sisters the excellency of your knowing god is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection that insistence is what the bible calls faith it is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the afflictions so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not barren, no, barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord just because i said thank you for my condition does not mean i will keep quiet i'm thanking you because the bible says listen the bible says in everything gives thanks is a law it has nothing to do with results i give thanks out of obedience but i insist out of faith 
please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalances why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the Bible not say through desire, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1, through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who... who who just packs death on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh, 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 oh. my lifting has come assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no matter listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find a way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have results in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you are a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry continually, I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill in one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks. But I came for this miracle service. 
thanking you for the one you did March, April, but also admitting that my life is not yet in experience, a reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere Listen, let me tell you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? When you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say turn and receive injection, you don't say, ah, doctor. No, 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 no. no. That's, that's not his business. The doctor is free. You are the one who is in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. 
You reign, you reign, Elohim. Chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he said. There was a day he said it but did not do it. There was a day the prophecy was still in motion. Now the time came when what God said. He now did. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone praying? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. Is 
said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me, but this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty, my people need to go, but if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure, tell delay, tell defeat. Hali parus kabaranta Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Kabaritata. Shaliz Kabaru Zepediagata. Unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please I want you to listen there is a God that doeth wonders and God can arise you see the thing with God is it is the process that takes time when the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests 
and you think God will answer them moving one by one just one pronunciation and that's the end of it it's gone so we're going to be very very fast I I sensed please listen very carefully I'm going to pray for people but I sensed that one of the the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting God that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life I truly believe listen to me that there is a dimension of favor that the church not just individuals must shift into otherwise forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God this issue of God today money tomorrow God today argument final is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing you must press for these graces as we pray hallelujah father we have come again you are the God that doeth wonders the mighty God of heaven we honor you and we bless you thank you for deliverances thank you for healings. thank you for prophecies thank you for the manifestation of your power Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, those of you who are coming here for the first time listen take away anxiety just relax there is a God who is mighty it will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you are we together now praise the Lord thank you bring the lady under the anointing here the power of God is coming on one lady here we have to be very fast now just here I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost all vision now and I'm seeing chains people's feet with chains and the Lord is saying this is what has impeded people from making progress you are moving but you are not making progress I'm about to pray for you now please whether you are an usher or not just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight I'm seeing chains I want to pray now in the name that is above all names I declare by the spirit Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such... A mighty deliverance overflow one just overflow one I'm seeing the power of God come we have to be very fast but I'm praying now you're going to shout that name that is above all names listen this deliverance is not just for you alone some of you came and left your family members for years you are still in the same spot you love God but there is no progress I want to pray for you now at the count of three there's such a strong anointing in the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you, 
and holding your family must give way father in the name of jesus let there be deliverance right now one two three shout jesus i cost those chains now in the name of jesus bring them out Shake the inside and outside. I decree and declare be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, 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 let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please, so that we can hurry up and make progress. We're still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families, what looks like a door on that chain, it must live right now. One, two, three. I command every chain. Chain of darkness dying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need a chain falling. Yeah. I need a chain falling. I need a chain. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals. The Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first, physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, at the count of three right now, that anointing is coming on people inside and outside. Those with physical barrenness issues, God is stepping in right now. And those with all kinds of related barrenness issues, God is also stepping in at the count of three. I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. 
the pain you experience at your back huh? that back pain the Lord is taking it away number Amen. two Amen. God is stepping into your family Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle this is this is an array of witchcraft and if we don't pray to take lives people will die like chickens but we're going to pray now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi state Kogi state the power of God is coming upon Kogi state right now right now I'm speaking the power of God it's a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi state. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing, will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder. It's a grace. I declare right now, whether you know your state or not, I'm seeing that map and I send the word. I declare by the spirit, let that anointing, I'm seeing fire rising. Kogi state. Shalis Kobarakatata, Prateka Teka Toka Parukata, Embrekadesha. I command liberty by the Spirit of the Living God. I command liberty by the power of the Holy Ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now, now by the Spirit. Mama. Please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, ma. And it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus. Let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family i cast it out of your life right now in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ jennifer 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 i'm hearing the name jennifer we have to really jennifer where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is she from? State. You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. Ah! I, don't know you now. I command that devil ah! out of her life now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge, relative to the grace that confronts it. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside, overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. Hold on.
You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a... Where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? A... Yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes. I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will live your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter. Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady, as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor. Favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, 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 it's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing, I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. By the power of, please, why are they, don't, please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Quarter Two, sir. You are from Quarter Two. Quarter Two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here. When it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant, like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you ma that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? She's just not. Okay. It's before that she was mad. But now, it's not like that. She was mad before? Yes. When uh, it has been now, uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to. This means when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We're going to minister to the sick. We have to, if not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me? My dear, how are you? You can hear me? Yes. I will pray for you, eh? And Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have? Huh? 
I didn't ask them to come out. I said, protocol, you people should be able to walk with the people so that we don't have. You are the one, come. Where are you from? Paladan. Paladan. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, sir. I've done many scans. What did they tell you is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you are not pregnant. Yes. Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save a big, major marital problem now. Husband, sir, come. Thank you. Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. God just wants to save you. Very little things like this can tear marriage not into two, into pieces. And want to, want to help them. Where are you coming from, sir? From Samaria. What are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. And God provision for the wedding. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is what I'm, I'm saying. We are going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. Eh? But God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You, you see how this kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now. Watch the power of God. Ah, the power of God. Oh. This, let me tell you, the anointing is very powerful. It's not for showmanship. It's like a drug. Just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, let me tell you the truth. You will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. And this, I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach. I lose it right now. And I release you. I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone, you have not gone near halfway the budget. Eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Kai, when is the wedding? 12th October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. The prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Surprise this, my dear brother. More than enough for your wedding in the name of jesus christ and i declare be healed right now be healed completely in the name of jesus be healed completely your name is jennifer okay i'll pray with you come i'll just lay hands on you all this jennifer i'll just lay hands i'm not getting any hold her collect the child please father in the name of jesus christ Take away this reproach that I see in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. In Jesus' name. Please come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come my dear. May the Lord bless you and honor you. Come. Reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one ushering lady. It's an ushering lady. I'm seeing a mighty deliverance. Reproach is living right now by the Spirit, whether inside or outside. I'm seeing one ocean lady. The power of God is coming upon her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that miracle take away reproach 
in the name of Jesus Christ take away reproach you are Jennifer in the name of Jesus I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear my dear hold our hands two of you just do what I'm asking you to do shout Jesus as loud as you can Because both of you need the same miracle and God is giving you that miracle is terminating shame completely from your life there is I'm seeing a man here you are a pastor I know there are many pastors I can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come You are a pastor where, sir? Come again. I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't hear you. Let him come. I'm seeing you. You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir, I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you. And then I'm praying for you. You will see the miraculous in a very strange way. You may not lay hands on people like this, but the spoken word, as you are speaking, you will see God begin to honor you and things begin to happen. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus, I release you into these dimensions in the spirit. And everything that has been said, I command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is releasing speed. Now, please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the... Ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the Spirit of the living God I command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare speed, 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 speed. Speed over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it. You are not wasting your time. You are receiving speed. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand. Just that media stand. I'm seeing, and it's still the same grace for speed. I'm seeing media stand. I'm seeing that grace. There are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you and I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic. The prophetic. I will do an impartation by the end of the service. But two ladies and three men. A real grace, real grace, the eyes, the eyes to see. I quicken that grace, quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we are wasting our time. We are going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where do they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. See, let me teach you something. You see, the word of God is very powerful. Believe it. Believe it. Don't, don't sit arguing and saying, will God touch me? Will it change my life? No. God will more than surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for this lady. And I decree and declare. the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow 2. Overflow 2. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow 2. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 2. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things. But when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet. Because... You will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Come, this man, this. What do you do? A businessman, sir. A businessman. Where? In Dandume, sir. Come again. Dandume, Dandume, Katsina State. Katsina State. Yes. I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Nnaemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Nnaemeka. 
Mecca. I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry. But listen now, this doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry, but the call of God has been lingering on your life. And it's time to answer that call. I'm stretching my hands. Lord, I don't know where these people are. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Online, in the main auditorium here, Father, anyone that your call up is upon his or her life, I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now and let them know that it's not just their imagination i declare by the anointing and by the spirit of god draw them into their various callings into the various mantles the trainings the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit to become mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now but i'm seeing a ring in the spirit enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately now you know that this is already it may be symbolic of marriage or a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it father in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but i'm praying right now that anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old in the name of jesus I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction. Especially geographic direction. The Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying. They don't know exactly where to be based. This is this this sounds funny, but the Lord, there is an anointing that is coming, giving you clear direction in dreams, visions, prophetic intuitions. Some of you are saying, Lord, should I stay? Should I go? Should I travel? Should I stay in the country? Out of the country? I'm praying right now. The grace for accurate direction. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Paul is saying, you are going to see people move in dimensions that are unusual. Dimensions that will stretch you sometimes beyond your normal... Um, gentlemen, hold on. My friend, listen. Hold on. Just leave the guy. He's crying. Just leave him there. Please. Don't worry. Let him just shift. Just shift a little there eh? and leave him. Let's just leave him with God there. Yeah? And it's all right. He was covering the camera. Thank you. There are diversities of gifts. Listen. Do you know why Paul brought this? Because if you understand the gift of the Spirit, it can stretch faith except you know God. There are certain gifts that are controversial in their operation. So Paul is saying, look, the first information, church, I want you to know is that in your walk of faith, you are going to encounter men that will move so strangely in the gifts of the spirit. It will stretch your intellect. It will stretch your education. You are going to see things you are not familiar with. But I give you a note. It is the same spirit. That is operating 
are you getting that information now so someone can come for a meeting like this and watch people fly under the anointing are we together now and watch people running out by the spirit and say this is this is strange I am not used to the Holy Spirit moving this way. That's why Paul started by giving us this information. That the gifts of the Spirit are diverse. Brothers and sisters, the first information I want you to know tonight is that the gifts of the Spirit are not nine. The gifts of the Spirit are only theologically classified based on the revelation that Paul's exegesis gives us. But the gifts of the spirit are not nine. That's why the word of God must be studied from the vista of the spirit. Otherwise, all that you will just read is theology. It says there are how many gifts? Diversities. Meaning, there were certain gifts Paul did not see, but are available. The gifts never stopped as nine. The gifts are as diverse as the alignment of the saints. Meaning that you are going to see certain gifts that you may not exactly find a name for them and so chances are that when you see it you're going to say no 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 this may not be of god there are diversities of gifts are you learning something tonight it says but the same spirit when you study god's generals one of the controversies between two of the generals alexander the way and um, Maria Woodward Eater. Now listen, Maria Woodward Eater, historically speaking, was the one who brought what we call trans evangelism, a phenomenon where people under a strange influence of the spirit will not only fall under the anointing but will freeze in a position for hours. It's not a phenomenon that they had seen. It was in our meetings like this guy now, he can stand like that for five hours. You can't do that ordinarily with your hand. And you can see people stop like this for hours. Now watch this. They did not have internet. And the media was not strong for people to have access to themselves. So when Alexander Doway, although a great man, mighty man who moved in the healing anointing, when he stumbled across a woman at the other side of the earth, who was carrying out mighty miracles, he found out from her meetings that people were freezing and stopping alexander the way said that woman number one the fact that she's a woman ministering is under the spirit of divination and maria woodward Ita said no i'm a woman who loves god god anointed me and called me to be an evangelist this is a man of god anointed alexander the way was the spiritual mayor of illinois but at the zion city yet in that level that that supposed high level of spirituality he could not discern that although this manifestation was foreign to him it was still of the holy ghost this is one of the biggest limitations that the church has given the holy spirit that the fact that god is not moving the way he moved five years ago does not mean he's not the one moving be careful be careful be careful There are manifestations that you see that you may never be able to capture. The Holy Ghost can open your eyes and conjure scriptures together that will paint a picture that reflects that experience. But you will not see it at plain sight. And so chances are that you will doubt the fact that it is God moving in that dimension. Smith Wigglesworth will be moved powerfully under the spirit and he would carry a dead man and punch the man not that he was an angry man he didn't even know what moved him what is the name of that gift listen let me tell you something are you seeing why when he finished teaching he told them i show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of ministering these gifts perfectly because if you lack love there will be criticism there will be cynicism are we together why did you heal this brother by hugging him where is it in the bible that you hug a brother and heal him and so you say this is the devil 
Where is it in the Bible that a congregation hold their hands together to pray in tongues? That means praying in tongues is demonic publicly. Are you seeing now? And sometimes I have taught us here that the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything. A herbalist can show you scriptures here that will cause you to walk in witchcraft. Many things happen in the Bible. Demons spoke. Donkeys spoke. People spoke in their backsliding state. Prophets who doubled into divination spoke. It takes the spirit to divide the word accurately and show you which was sponsored. The part of scripture that was sponsored by the spirit is what we call the word of God. Are you getting blessed? There are diversities of gifts. Diversities of gifts. In this end time, we are going to see moves of the spirit in proportions and dimensions that will bring harsh criticism but will birth the glory of God in unusual ways. Point number two. Please, let's hurry up. Number five. Media, help us. There are differences in ministries. Now, do you know what he's saying? That means under the same gift, the way you dispense it like a pharmacist giving drugs is different. The same gift, but the dispensing of that gift, the administration of it is different. That means you can see three prophets. Are we together? But the character and the nature of that operation is different verse 6 then it says there are diversities of activities but it's the same God who works all and in all so let's get to the gifts 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all now here is the key the gift of the spirit is for the profit of the body the profit of the body the profit of the body not the profit of a denomination not the profit of a man of God not a profit of just an individual it is for the profit of all verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom so Paul is classifying them now are we together now through the spirit to another is given the word of knowledge through the same spirit please let's run it down next verse to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing take note do you see an s there with gifts not a gift of healing gifts of healing by the same spirit next verse to another oh dear media is playing a lot of games with our our passion let me open it so that i can read it there's no time for this to another faith by the same spirit to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, various or diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. 11 and we stop there. It says, but all this worketh that one and the same, very same spirit, dividing unto every man severally as he wills. Now close your Bible and let's talk. So Paul, for the sake of order, remember the entire text of first of first Corinthians 12, 13, 14. The entire subject can be summarized in one word. First Corinthians 14, verse 40. It says, Let all things be done decently and in order. So Paul, he, his, his, his passion is to see that. Everything is done decently. But in order to do that, he had to build like a wise master builder and teach them. The gifts of the Spirit are not limited to nine. Yes, it is true that there are nine gifts theologically defined according to the experience of the present day church. Theologically speaking, the nine gifts, let's work with the nine gifts for the sake of understanding. Um, many of us know that they are divided into three categories. The first category is called the revelatory gifts. The gifts that have to do with revelation and insight from the realm of the spirit. 
revelatory gifts and there are three of the revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits i'm not going to dwell on all of them i'll just touch them there are a few i want us to just stop there revelatory gifts that's the first classification theologically speaking that the gifts of the spirit are classified into three first revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge the discerning of spirits number two utterance or vocal gifts that's the second classification gifts that have to do with speech communication all the gifts will require communication but that this one's the primary medium for dispensing them is your mouth speech the gift of diverse kinds of tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy comes under this classification the gift of diverse kinds of tongues don't just write tongues diverse kinds of tongues the gifts of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy and then number three power gifts the third classification theologically speaking power gifts and that includes the gift of faith the gifts of healing add s to gifts the gifts of healing and then the working of miracles so three 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 the revelatory gifts that make you think like christ the utterance gifts that make you speak like christ the power gifts that make you act like christ the revelatory gifts make you think like christ the vocal gifts make you speak like christ the power gifts cause you to act like christ are we together let's take them one by one very quickly number one word of wisdom what is it what exactly is the word of wisdom <laughs> The word of wisdom is the ability to supernaturally profess solutions to situations and problems. The supernatural ability to profess solutions to situations, problems, challenges that are beyond your current level of education. Sorry, I'm fast, I'm running. Supernatural ability to profess solutions to problems and situations beyond your current level of education, exposure, physical maturity and experience. When you sustain an ability in the spirit to communicate divine ideas and solutions to human problems, problems that defy your current level of exposure, problems that defy the, 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 the knowledge that your level of maturity should have brought, your level of education and your level of experience is called the word of wisdom. Access to supernatural illumination. Access to supernatural understanding. You need it. Now, let me tell you this. Many people have downplayed on this gift of the spirit. You know why? Because in our thinking, we think it is not charismatic. Do you know? Do you know? Truly, let me tell you. This is one of the apex of the apostolic ministry. Not even power gifts. Not revelatory gifts. It's impossible to claim you're working in the apostolic office truly and lack the gift of wisdom. Because the apostolic office is first an administrative office. Jesus himself manifested this. John chapter 8. When you read 1 to 11, it was the, the, the issue of the woman who was caught in adultery. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. We're not, going to, we're not going to read all that because of time, but just write it. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. Jesus was teaching and he sat down somewhere. And then the Pharisees and scribes caught a woman in adultery. You know, every time I read this story, I'm surprised. Where was the man? You see that victimizing women did not start today. No. The man may be part of them. The goal was to pin Jesus. You, you see it now? Let me tell you where you need this gift. Because 
this our world is full of wicked men and women who will look for every and anything to throw you destroy your business destroy your ministry destroy you down you need the gift of the word of wisdom and then they came to Jesus sorry there's no time let me just quote it threw that woman in front of him and he said Jesus you claim you're a prophet you claim you are by here's a test we caught this woman in adultery in the very act of it very act means that there should be a man he said man you can go the woman let's just go <laughs> you see how wicked those people were then when they threw him they now said Moses said I hope you know that part of the condition to be a true prophet is that you must acknowledge every other prophet that has come so if Jesus now rejected Moses they'll say you see you're a fake prophet and if Jesus said yes you are right they'll say now you have submitted to our religious governing authorities that was a difficult situation you will be faced with situations in your life where yes and no will still put you in trouble both yes and no will land you in trouble your enemies is like penalty you know how they they, they pay football and they pin you you are the goalkeeper they're about to pay the the people are already shaking themselves it's at that point you need to tap into this dimension of the gift of the spirit People vow that because of tribalism, they will drive you out of your job. The boss says something, your superior and direct boss and the manager says something. Conflicting statements, they carry the file and drop. And two of them are calling you. Let me tell you, you don't need education. You need the gift of the word of wisdom. You obey the one directly under you, they sack two of you. You obey the one above you, you come back and meet the one in your unit. It helps us to think like Christ. He says, let this mind, permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Business people need this mind. Every leader needs this understanding. And here's what Jesus did. They thought Jesus was going to say certain things. Jesus kept writing. Writing. The Holy Ghost was moving him. The fountain of wisdom self. Then he lifted up his head in confidence. And here's what he said. He who does not have sin, he was talking about it's another way of saying i'm the only one who is qualified to cast the stone you get it and then he said he just like joseph said find a man who is discreet and wise it was another way of saying i'm here he who does not have sin to cast the stone and i'm sure he was the oldest guy who was the other party there and he lifted the stone and he dropped it everyone dropped it and he said woman where are thine accusers and she turned he said neither do i accuse you go and sin no more Jesus manifested that was not word of knowledge that was the gift of the word of wisdom how many times we have been whipped by life because we lack this an opportunity that would have honored you how many pastors who stood before government officials would have made certain statements by the spirit that would have given them access to certain things imagine how many foolish decisions our loved ones have taken born again and filled with the holy spirit but not allowing these possibilities find expression you need the gift of the word of wisdom in your life education is limited your experiences are limited you cannot wait to respond to life only based on your exposure and experience you will need that grace can we pray in one minute and cry to the God of heaven and say, Lord, I'm tired of foolish decisions. I access wisdom by the Spirit. The word of wisdom. My life is full of challenges that need to be surmounted. And Lord, I need a dimension of wisdom that is beyond my age. There are many of us in ministry, you, you have challenges financially, administratively, in terms of growth and membership. There are many of us here, you need grace. You don't know what to do. Should I get a job? Should I do business? You, you need the word of wisdom. You need the word of wisdom. A supply of intelligence that is above this realm. You need God to communicate something that bails you out. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Help me, oh God. Shabarakatos. Spirit of the living God, I open up to you. 
My destiny is at the mercy of your wisdom. Speak to me. Tired of piercing myself again and again with needless sorrows. When your wisdom can bail me out of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Please sit down. We have to run. Just help those under the anointing. In 2004, I spent three weeks praying this gift into my life. Three weeks. God is my witness. Praying it into my life. I said, Lord, you cannot send me as foolish as I am. And I am too young to make the decisions I should make. I need a supply of intelligence that is higher. Listen, some mistakes in life don't have second chance. Some answers, the Bible says to not be hasty. You can stand before your destiny helper and blow up your opportunity forever. That's why Jesus kept quiet. Because this is not a usual communication. You need the spirit to speak. How many people have stood before their supervisors? How many people have stood before their financial helpers? How many people have stood before their boss? He says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist. Number two, the word of knowledge. What is it? The word of knowledge is a supernatural insight and access into past and present events with a view to proffering solutions with a view to proffering solutions access into happenings access into occurrences sometimes even occurrences that predate your own birth Our world is full of wickedness and we need this dimension of the Holy Spirit that can help us to go back in time and piece together useful informations that help us to interpret the happenings in our lives. Are we together now? Oftentimes the secret to the future is in the past. When we can sustain the eyes to go back and see and understand Word of knowledge. The purpose of the gift of the word of knowledge. Primarily, aside from supplying informations, is to build the faith and the conviction of the recipients. If I can reach into an information in your life and supply you an information, that might be useful in helping you interpret your today it can build your faith now notice that the, of the word of knowledge and prophecy works peri pursue in fact many people mistaking this gift half of what people call prophecy is the manifestation of the word of knowledge the word of knowledge only deals with past events and present events when it becomes futuristic that's prophecy past events present events Two examples very quickly in John chapter 1 you read from verse 45 to the last verse 51 John chapter 1 the Bible tells us about a man called Nathaniel are we together Nathaniel was beckoned by Philip that Jesus they had met the Messiah that was prophesied and Nathaniel made a very sarcastic statement Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth while all that conversation was happening Jesus was somewhere watching them. Then Nathanael comes and Jesus sees Nathanael. Here's what Jesus said. An Israelite indeed in whom there is guile. And Nathanael saw him. I said, uh-uh, you mean you know me? And he said, Nathanael, while you were under the tree insulting me, I saw you. <gasps> Nathanael was amazed. Immediately, an attestation, this is the Christ, truly, the son of the living God. And then he said, Nathanael, just because I gave you this, you were stunned. You are going to see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending. Remember when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman at the well. That woman had the potential to bring a lot of people to hear and listen to Jesus. Preparing them for what 
would happen at redemption but there needed to be an access point the woman had to be convicted and then Jesus came to her and they started a conversation about water and then Jesus looks at her and says to her madam you have five husbands past the sixth one that you are with now is not your husband and she looked she said I perceive you are a prophet and then he began to talk to her the Bible says she left her water pot there ran to the city and said all of you come come and see a man he didn't say come and see a preacher come and see a man that manifested a gift that astonished me come come see a man that has told me what I've done and when the people came and listened to Jesus here was their testimony we now believe not because of what you have said we have had that encounter by ourselves the word of knowledge if used in accordance to the word is powerful I have watched people's faith jump leap just because a communication one word was given to them by the Spirit do you know let me tell you this never fight the gifts of the Spirit it may be abused that's why we are balancing it but do not ever fight it the encouragement that happens to your faith when a true man of God gives you a genuine word of knowledge not a general guesswork that you know this is not edifying there are words of knowledge that are not blessing are we together if I look at you and say you have pain all over your body the probability is yes something must be paining you somewhere so that's not powerful enough to convict you but when I look at you and say Pastor Alpha while you were eating yam from home before coming and this and that and that and that and I talk to you ah then something happens to your faith and all of a sudden you look and you are like my the God who can see me is the one who is telling me now by this time tomorrow you will be foolish to doubt him are we together now the word of knowledge listen listen let me have your attention the word of knowledge is a powerful instrument of building faith have you gone to a place where you see people being sarcastic and nasty and lousy and insulting the cynical people and then one really strong accurate powerful well delivered word of knowledge and all of a sudden you see everybody wipe sleep and you say lift up your hand and everybody is lifting and open the unbelief in our world require the gifts of the spirit to tame doubt and release the power of God to people I remember betting with a woman the gender of her child and I told her she argued it was a female I said if it's a male you will make pepper soup for me if it's a female, I don't know how to make pepper soup, so I will give you the financial equipment. I started dancing. I said, hey, somebody is going to make pepper soup for me. <laughs> what a free way of earning a living. <laughs> Imagine what happens to your stubborn loved ones. You know, we have almost every family has, for whatever reason, we have people around us who the devil is trying to snatch you pray in tongues they shout they talk nonsense i want to go to the house of god no 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 and then one day god just lands in a way and you commute not not for self-aggrandizement you speak a powerful word to your father and say sir the lord told me to tell you while you were at the bank trying to collect that money it was remember that your argument with that woman her name was stella Usually they will act as if you are lying and then later they will call you and say who told you? Let me tell you the human spirit can never resist the supernatural. Our pride can claim it doesn't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If you, if you encounter the word of knowledge whether you repent or not you can't sleep that night for sure. Ah, ah. He called my name and said this and said that. I think where it was in Joss, if you can remember, when Joss ministering um, some, I think one of the polytechnics, and then while I was ministering, the Holy Ghost ministered to me that there was a young man who was doubting, you know, you know, these are people where you know, doubting, doubting. How are we sure? Remember this story? And I said there is a young man 
now this is what you are thinking to yourself you are doubting and this is what is wrong with you God will heal you now when that guy came out even me when you see him you know it had to be God that brought him out guy just came out dragging and said honestly he was standing there doubting this thing and it was like magic brothers and sisters our shout is too much let the gift help us our 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 begging is too much let the god brought these gifts to make the gospel superior the the way we communicate this thing we are the mercy of people's wills we beg we beg you know everybody oh yeah lift your hand now is jesus not here my jesus and everybody's looking at you where is he and you are negotiating with them no the bible says that when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power even if you are a prophet if someone gives you a word of knowledge it will impress you you won't say because i'm walking it it's like you are it's like you are a nurse when you are sick won't you turn for injection will you say because i'm a nurse? no another nurse will give you an injection and you will receive it so that you will be well listen i want you to cry tonight and say lord my family needs salvation let this gift of the spirit work in my life pray one minute there are doubters in my community insulting and blaspheming the name of the lord all that you would grant me access oh god the word of knowledge supernatural illumination insight into events explaining the mysteries of the lives of men helping men make sense of their lives hallelujah please sit down number three discerning of spirits i can spend the whole night here but let's see how god will help us what's discernment or we call it discernment or discerning of spirits please do not joke with this gift this gift of the spirit will be um it will bail you out of many pains are we together what is discerning of spirits the gift of perception perception the ability to perceive spiritual impulses the ability to know the origin the source and the motivation behind the manifestation the origin the source and even the motif behind the manifestation it's called discernment. Whether activity is initiated and sustained by God, whether it is an act of man's will or it is demonic, you will never judge them by the physical results. It will take discernment for you to know that which is of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you and I submit to you with all humility. It will be foolish to imagine everything happening in the body of Christ is of God. No. There are things that are orchestrated by demons. There are doctrines that came from devils. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some will depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. There is such a doctrine as the doctrine of demons. Not the study of demons. An understanding that was fabricated intentionally from the pit of hell to destroy the saints are we together you need discernment it is only through discernment that you can judge righteous judgment it's impossible for you to judge accurately if you lack discernment you will call good evil you will call evil good you will call saints devils you will call devils saints it takes discernment the, 
The realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment. The environment that birthed this realm. The raw materials that have now crystallized as matter in this realm came from the realm of the spirit. And anyone who has access to the realm of the spirit has a superior advantage, whether through divination, whether through the Holy Spirit or any other spirit, any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. There are many other entrances, but he says, I'm the authorized entrance, meaning you can enter the house through a window. You can enter the house through somewhere. If I enter your house, if you step into your house and you find me and I crawled my way through a gutter somewhere, am I inside your house? Yes. Did I enter legally? No. The authorized way is the gate and the door. I've told you every power you see being manifested on earth is God's power. Every plus the power manifested by witchcraft. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all the only reason why it is called witchcraft is because there is an agenda behind that result and the whole spirit is not the spirit that authorized that possibility to find expression so there is the correctness of the result does not mean it is of God the correctness of the result is gauged by the spirit that sponsored it any activity in the realm of the spirit sponsored by the Holy Spirit has God's endorsement that means that it is possible this guy can be sick and as a herbalist I can conjure leaves based on a book my grandfather taught me correct and he says when you put lemon and add it with guava drink pour charcoal on it set it on fire in the night it can raise a kind of incense that will bring health to him and my grandfather will say that's how we lived healthy this guy can be sick I will conjure those things it will shock you right in your presence the way the guy will be healed you say I can't feel pain again he said that's it and he'll go and bring someone else now if I come as a man of God and I say wow we are brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers are we together no we are not brothers brothers are those from the same father and mother or at least father correct we can be brothers you see because the spirit one time I was ministering to a lady and they took her somewhere in Zaria here and she she described a very nasty experience that she had she said when she went there one of the things that happened to her was that they will burn you will drop your money not honorarium there's an exact amount that you drop once you drop the man you know the whatever it is will now call certain names cajole you know read from book slates and all kinds of things and the moment they say it a spirit would tell that man um whatever spirit influence and then all of a sudden you know how it happens when people manifest the, the victim now will start shaking, shaking, and before you know it, the spirit will start speaking. Now, here's the interesting point. After all the conversation with the spirit, you now ask Moya, why did you come? Maybe they annoyed me or I didn't eat. You know how spirits talk. They are so dull. I have not, not eaten. And you people are eating in this land. And we are here hungry. And then, instead of casting out the devils, because they cannot cast out the devils, they do what we call occultic pacifism. You pacify by an atonement. You see that? So you, it's the spirit that will tell you what it will eat. So the spirit will say, one black goat. You say, Tom, that's it. You too, all of you had it. It's not me that wants to eat the goat. And then they bring the goat. And the only thing the man burns is the legs and the head. <laughs> Who will not burn that part? And settle down with the real part of the goat and say, look, he that serves in the altar should, should eat from the altar. And then when I looked at the lady in my mind, I said, what is, what is all this thing now? And you know, before I would talk, all of a sudden, that spirit just started manifesting. And I said, honestly, I don't have all this time. Please, I'm tired. Just live in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was the end of it. When the lady got up, her mother was surprised. And watched this. Because that, this thing, you will go for many days. It's not like you will go once. If you don't complete the, uh, the, the program the demon gave it can backfire and kill everybody you know how it happens and all of that 
let me tell you all that is nonsense i repeat nonsense absolute nonsense there is a name oh, that was given to believers there is a name there is a name it says in my name it didn't say the mentioning of it you can shout jesus still forever and like the sons of skiba with demons who pound on you like many people talk it's not about pronunciation there is a guy there's one guy that committed a crime recently his name is jesus i'm mean, one one of these funny guys now not it not the footballer i was reading i said jesus can you imagine that guy so you stand and shout and while you are shouting jesus jesus no it is not in the pronunciation it's in the revelation the miracle is in your understanding that's why jesus looked at them and said go one of the standard proofs of spiritual maturity is discernment you cannot say you are matured in the spirit if this gift is not working in your life brothers and sisters i submit to you and i join the many loving men of god around the world and together we take responsibility for not helping the body of christ mature we have produced miracles we have produced signs and wonders but the average believer is not matured at all we do not understand the speakings of the spirit we do not know how to interpret spiritual things we are dull of hearing no ears that hear no eyes that see but god is helping us in jesus name there are many other texts that talk about discernment the bible says in hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 let me give it to you please just write very quickly hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 the bible says that strong meat is for those who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil in acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 when you read acts 16 from verse 16 to 18 paul came into a city and there was a young lady the bible called her a damsel he said that this lady had the spirit of divination and some business people saw her and saw the potentials in her and they negotiated she would give word of knowledge and prophecy and she would bring money and the bible says they made much gain with it and then one time she saw paul preaching and here's what she said that's why you need discernment these are the holy men of god they have come to show us the way of righteousness let me tell you what many of us will do say wow you mean how long have you been in ministry I never knew that I mean you are so generous you don't know me you're already talking about me so let's walk together can we walk come to my pulpit on Sunday even if it's a Saturday night listen please hallow your altar don't bring anybody just because you saw gifts let there be a system of vetting for the sake of the sheep are we together these are the men the first day Paul kept quiet Second, the Bible says she kept doing it one time Paul looked and said wow prophesying word of knowledge and Paul just switched in the realm of the spirit and saw a demon manipulating and said look hurry up let's we must make gate and Paul casted that demon you know they beat Paul because of it the rest is history the people were angry because they knew that business was closed for them as soon as the lady was delivered she got up madam are you seeing nothing I'm not seeing anything again Lord give us discernment first Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 first Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 we don't have the time but let me give you that story I wanted to use it as the text the classic text to explain discernment for you the Bible says that God gave Solomon an understanding heart and his first test was two harlots who came before him praise God the Bible says that those, all of them had, you know, they had a child each. And then the Bible says, whilst they were sleeping, one slept on her child. I don't know what kind of sleep that was. And suffocated the child to death. Then she got up in the middle of the night, shook her child and found out her child was dead. And quietly replaced the child. The next day when they got up, there was, there was an issue. The woman wanted to breastfeed her child and noticed that the child was dead but she looked well and said no this is not my child off they went to solomon and when they got there 
the woman who swapped the child started, you know, they started advocating and said this and that and that and Solomon looked. That was a serious situation. Now notice, this is what I want to teach you. Notice how Solomon manifested discernment. The first thing he did was he said, bring the sword. That's the word of God. Go and get me the sword. This confusion requires the word of God that is able to cut asunder and divide between bone and marrow. That knife was a similitude of the sword of the spirit. Discernment is impossible if you do not understand the character of God. Not just the word of God. You must know what God can do and what he cannot do. The operation of any spirit must be consistent with the general operation of God. Such that even if you do not find a scripture for it, it still must be consistent verbatim. And so when they brought the sword, he said, bring the child. Bring the issue of contention. This is how we are going to discern. We are going to use the word of God to divide that issue. And immediately he lifted the sword. The sword was not for the child. It was for their hearts. The woman, the woman whose child was, like the Bible says, can a mother forget her suckling child? I said, no, no, please. If it's issue of death now, hand it over. And the other woman was saying, you see, I'm right. And Solomon said, I've gotten my answer. Madam, give this woman her child. Go and bury your own child. Discernment. Let me tell you something. In this our world, somebody can steal a laptop and sell that laptop and wear a suit and swear and say, me? Do I look like somebody who can steal a laptop? You need discernment. You can see somebody that looks like a thief truly looks like a thief scattered disorganized but he may be one of the most honest persons in your life is that true policemen need this our our because the number of people in prison today that are not supposed to be there is only god that will help you can look at me now never believe that i'll steal a laptop what for but what if i have a spirit that makes me steal it are we together now? We have blamed innocent people. They carry money in your house and you come, no discernment. You call everybody. And a smart young chap who is the thief about to go for lectures. And one guy just comes out. He's, he may not be born again, but he doesn't steal. And you look at him and say, come. Are you going to just bring this money out now? Or they will arrest you. And he say, I'm not the one. You need discernment. If you do not have discernment, you are going to destroy your leadership because the world is full of deception. Are we together? Someone can be killing you and look at you and smile while you are dying, while they are piercing you. That's the person who said, don't promote this person. This person is not from this state. And you come and meet him and say, sir, my portion is stretching. He said, my son, ha, ah, oh yeah, sit down. What did you discuss with them? And they went and said, this fool. But with discernment, as soon as you sit down, something in your spirit, you may not see a vision, but something refuses to agree. Something just says, uh-uh. So, have you ever wanted to do something? Maybe you wanted to do business with somebody, or you wanted to do a discussion, or you were just saying, we are going to be partners, and you could not sleep in the night. Not fear, I'm not talking of fear. For, and everything, physically speaking, was correct. Have you ever made up your mind that you are going to ask a lady out? You prayed, you fasted, you were happy. On that day, after you talk in and put your tie, your spirit, your, your peace ceased. Ah. He said, I mean, I, I look forward to this time. Let me tell you why many people land into trouble. We numb those things and continue. And continue. You were about to travel, but nothing in your spirit, not fear. And you ignored it. Discernment is powerful. Discernment is powerful. But let me tell you something. No matter, most people train their discernment just by prayer. They never study the word. That's why they get into confusion. Are we together? If all you do is pray and pray and pray and pray, 
your eyes will be open to the realm of the spirit but your capacity to interpret the impulses will be wrong that's why you will give false visions you will give false interpretations you will see a nice lady come darling you will see a nice lady like this lady now and you just sense something demonic in her and because you do not have the word to understand you just look and say kai i stood near this lady and i had some this lady must be a witch no sir she's not a witch you are not a good bible student you are a prayer warrior but you do not understand the word and you are using error to now change this lady and call her a witch are we together now let's be very careful we have we have destroyed people's lives pastors have used inaccurate discernment alongside other gifts to scatter marriages hello we have called everybody witch you just turn and you look at a lady like this say so why are you looking fine like this you are a witch no you are not a witch pray for two of them and see who who gets delivered we must be careful discernment is needed in our day today do you know prophets cried in the bible when things happened and they did not see it or or perceive it they said lord why did you hide this from me may god build us to a point where nothing passes above you without your spirit receiving the seed hallelujah praise the lord or some of us have those impulses but we do not know how to interpret it and respond to it you've been having an impulse like death is around the corner but you didn't know what to do until somebody died and say yeah so this is what i've been feeling those impulses are not caused by demons it is the holy spirit listen to my message spiritual perception the holy spirit is attempting to communicate to you if you do not have the word of god your dreams will be corrupted hello because dreams and visions are also an extension of discernment am i blessing you one of the most deceptive tools that satan is using now i think in the last four five years has been aberrated dreams and visions god would make your destiny the devil would try to use the face of your destiny helper to chase you in a dream you stand up and bind him for two hours and reject him in the physical and remain poor and broke forever we have to be careful satan has made families fight today by using the faces of mothers and fathers and you just say i saw my mother with a knife i said i don't care she will die be careful be careful listen our only basis for escaping error is the word of god please you have to believe what i'm saying the study of scripture is important it gives us an insight into how god works so we can judge from that lens There are many dreams when you get up, you are just supposed to say nonsense. Blast in tongues for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, and that ends it. But some of us document everything. Plus, wicked dreams from the pit of hell, we document it. And then when you are mentoring somebody one day, you say, these are my book of dreams, read it. And then the guy reads it and says, wow, strange creatures. I said, it's the realm of the spirit, just keep reading. You see, let me tell you, don't laugh. I'm saying this because there are people now who are not even sure of anything again. Is that true? Satan can manipulate dreams. One brother can have a dream and see ten sisters. He saw one. When he was praying about her, he saw another. You, you see confusion? I'm not saying he's a bad brother. But now you've seen ten ladies. You are now confused. So even if somebody comes to prophesy and say, it's, it's um, sister seven that you saw number seven you say what of two i first saw one before seven and confusion what of people who marry and have dreams and see someone who is not their husband and get up and say that means i made a mistake i knew it i knew that this look you are married you are married there is grace to live there is grace to work it out it is this lack of thing that can make a man who has been with a woman for 20 years she gave you children all of a sudden you made money and then you go and meet and, and it's usually us prophets and apostles you come and meet us and then we just conjure all kinds of stories the man goes back home and drives the wife say discernment say it again discernment 
you need discernment you need discernment to know who to help someone comes to lie down in your room all through that night strange occurrences happen it's, it's not a devil but he needs help are we together people bring atmospheres discernment helps you to pick the impulses of people sometimes as I minister to people that's how I know they are, they are in trouble they may come out for something else but as I stand there are all kinds of things happening and I know that something is wrong something is wrong when you train yourself you can discern the presence of angels you will not see them but you can describe them it's a mystery you will know not just that they are angels but what kind of angels and their operation you can know their direction are you see if now you see let me tell you if your spirit is not trained to understand this you will always think that the people who are saying it are lying and there are people who are lying are we together but you can discern it you can know you can train yourself in a room by the time you are worshiping and the shekinah of god comes not just by your shaking you know i'm not alone this is zion now this room has changed you that's how you discern anointings as a man of god and you don't use anointing like a general purpose machine gun you won't be effective in ministry like that because you will be ministering an area you sense the anointing but you could not discern what kind of anointing and to what degree so we can be ministering here now and all of a sudden the healing anointing now begins to come if you do not have that discernment you can be saying something else and you see the anointing just like the Holy Spirit is very sensitive when the anointing comes into a place and it's not acknowledged and channeled by faith for operation it will be unfruitful as powerful as it is nothing works without faith even the anointing everyone say discernment think of how many things that have happened in our lives because we lack discernment we need to cry for discernment we need to cry for discernment can we pray in one minute say lord discernment grant discernment to discern good and evil to discern opportunities to discern helpers to discern enemies, to discern doors, to discern manipulations of demons over my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need discernment. I think he was in Koinonia here one time after a very hot miracle service. The very next day, some guys called a lady. They called the lady and said she won. Uh, I, I, I don't, I can't remember the amount, but a very huge amount. You know, let's assume maybe one million or five million, and told her you won it. Make sure you don't tell anybody. Quietly find your way to the front of. I, I think it was um, maybe first bank or somewhere like that, and they met that lady there. The rest is history. The next thing. That lady found herself in Kaduna in a building. One of our ladies, she's no longer here, found herself in Kaduna. They took her somewhere in your Kaduna, one place that looks like a warehouse. It was as if her eyes, I don't know how to, you, you get what I'm saying? As if you are, you, are, you are awake, but it's as if they did something to your eyes. And all of a sudden, her, it's like her eyes, she came back to herself and she called me. I said, where are you? And she said, I'm so, 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 please. I said, hey, can you walk out and see a bike there? I said, take a bike immediately. Straight. I told her, take a bike straight to Kao. No matter how much, just arrive there first. I was waiting for that lady until she arrived. In I said, what happened to you? She said, honestly, she doesn't know. I remember one thief that Pastor Jakes caught in. I think Pastor Jakes was going to Sabo or something. And then the guy was, you know, some of them use charm abracadabra they sit down and they do something they, they don't put their hand there they can just hang it around and your money follows them from today that devil that comes near you the, the fire and the discernment you will, you will know and you will hold the hand and tell him look 
not everybody is a normal human being there are people who are men plus possibilities men plus possibilities hallelujah can we touch on one more gift let's touch on diverse kinds of tongues How many have I done? One, two, three. Let's do four. We can continue next week because there's something I want to talk about that is hot in my spirit. I was preparing it while I was. Let's just talk about tongues. The Bible tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues. Everybody say diverse kinds of tongues. When the Bible says diverse, that means that there are different kinds of tongues. Probably, I think one of the greatest conflicts between and thank God for great men of God like Reverend Tende who wrote a book. I think it was a book particularly tailor-made to the northern church to help most every Christian pray in tongues. Wonderful text, you can get it and read it. It was an attempt to give a, a very solid 21st century biblical foundation because probably one of the greatest points of conflict between the Pentecostal charismatic and the orthodox is this dividing line of this subject of tongues is that true many of us come from backgrounds and families where people have different kinds of responses some of us even as we are now probably we are still there's an internal war over the issue of tongues the Bible talks of diverse kinds of tongues and in 1st Corinthians 13 Paul gives us a little, he opened it more to us. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels. Tongues of men refer to any earthly language. The language understood by men, used by inhabitants upon the earth. The tongues of angels refer to supernatural communications, not just languages used by angels, angelios, messengers any being that hails from the realm of the spirit communicating a language that is not known to men is called the tongues of angel it was an ancient way of communicating spiritual things the bible and theologically speaking identifies broadly speaking three kinds of tongues number one is what we call tongues for personal edification and growth you may want to write it down maybe you will help somebody with it tongues for personal edification and growth first corinthians 14 and verse 2 the bible speaks there he says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god not unto men but to god so there is tongues that is for personal edification and growth there's tongues that the bible says that is a sign to unbelievers are we together as was the case in acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 to 12 the day of pentecost the bible says that the people were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak in tongues and among the many variations of tongues they were communicating earthly languages are we together and most of the people came and heard them let's go to verse 6 just give us verse 6 and let's let's look at what it says, and when the sound of God, the multitudes came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Can you imagine? Almost every language there was represented. Someone was communicating it. Now, the communicators did not even know what language they were speaking. But the listeners, they were not just speaking a language in the spirit and interpreting it. They were communicating a language they never learned. Hallelujah a sign to unbelievers history is full of people who have done that it happened to kenneth e hagin it happened to rw shambach of blessed memories people who would go to certain lands to preach and there would be no interpreter and the power of god would fall on them and they would preach in chinese fluently for that period of time afterwards everything goes down so there is tongues as a sign to unbelievers then number three there is tongues as a ministry gift tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body 
1 Corinthians chapter 14, when you read from verse 4 and 5, 5 particularly, the Bible talks to us about that. Tongues, very important. It says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you should prophesy. It says, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. Unless, that means this is the condition for them to become equal. We are coming there. That the one prophesies is greater than the one who manifests these kinds of tongues. Unless, that means the moment there is an interpreter, what he's speaking and the interpretation will equal prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. Now let me show you where the confusion is before we talk about diverse kinds of tongues. Give us verse 29 and 30. This is where many people have erroneously carved out a basis for confusion. 12, 29 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, 29 and 30. Are all apostles? What's the answer? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Watch this now. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Here's where many of our dear, wonderful men and women of God who are well-meaning, love the Lord, but have inaccurate understanding of the word of God. This is where the confusion has come. It says, do all speak with tongues? Now look at what context of tongues. The next verse, do all interpret? So he's talking about tongues as a ministry gift, not tongues as for your personal edification. Are we together now? Not everybody will manifest the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. What is it really? The gift of diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural communication. Listen. Prophecy in an unknown, unknown, an unknown language. Be it heavenly or earthly. Prophecy in an unknown language. You are communicating a word from the Lord to the people of God. But it is in a language that is not known by you the speaker. And most, most often than not by the listeners. When you communicate a word from the Lord that is supposed to edify the people. Are we together now? But it's just that it came in a language that is not known by you the speaker nor the listeners. There must be the spirit of God must move upon you the speaker or another person to break down that spiritual message you brought so that the listeners can hear and apply their faith to it and receive so when I begin to say everybody pray in tongues there are a number of people who have problem with it and say no it's not in the Bible it, it was there in the day of Pentecost the church in Corinth were manifesting it. In fact, let me tell you this. Paul himself made a very profound statement. And he said, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all. When you read 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. And then you read verse 39. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. And then verse 39. He says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Paul is saying, look, 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 look. I pray in tongues more than ye all. Not just that I, I interpret all of this. See that? It is important. Please listen to me. If you are here seated, maybe you are just coming today inside or outside. And you have shortchanged yourself because you have probably been sincerely but wrongly indoctrinated. That praying in tongues is a gift that is for a few people. The person who communicated that is not in error. He was only incomplete. Is that true? What kind of tongues? If he means the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, he's correct. It's not for everybody. The Bible says that. And where that gift is manifested, it is only beneficial to the body if there is an interpreter. The individual who communicated it or another person. But the Bible says the tongues for edification does not need interpretation because not speaking to men. We are speaking to God. 14 verse 2. See that? Are we together now? Have you gotten that clearly? So this is very, very important. You are here and you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I can begin to give you a rundown of several things you are missing. When the ministry was a lot smaller, I used to do that by myself. Then Pastor Jakes came, joined, Ejimitu used to join. And now the ministry is, is so large. We've handed everything to the prayer department. 
and boy are they doing a great job if you are here you are not filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues i want you to know that tuesday is a wonderful opportunity for you come whether or not is their their baptism you know a prayer you just come and make sure that they can minister to you hallelujah let me stop here and talk on words we will take from interpretation of tongues and and the rest because next week please don't mix next week it'll be a very great impartation the lord instructed me to activate this gift but i want to talk on words the holy spirit while i was getting ready to go and take my bath i was just you know praying a little and then the holy spirit began to minister to me the anointing of the spirit just came strong upon me and the lord told me that i should speak to people about words write this down words are god's instrument of creation words next week when i teach you the I, we finish the vocal gifts and the power gifts we'll talk some more but it's important for you to know words are god's instrument of creation and one classic proof of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistent with the word of god listen carefully the ability for your communications and your speakings to always without fail be in line with the word of god now sometimes in an attempt to press into deeper dimensions of god listen carefully and i must admit this to you you know sometimes as we press towards superior dimensions in the spirit which is valuable we tend to trivialize some of these foundational truths and look at them as though they are basic they are for children at every level of your work with god your words will be the programmers of your destiny write it down your words are the programmers of your destiny you don't talk anyhow speak antichrist you must culture your words by the word of god you must ensure that your communication is building your life and your destiny many of us have destroyed our lives because we have allowed our words let me show you a few scriptures that will really challenge you can i give you some verses about words that have really really blessed me i tried to write the five or six most powerful scriptures i have found about words and i will give it to you ready media please help us if we can project them they will be great um we we'll need some speed here so that we can pray number one john 6 63 john 6 63 the words that i speak unto you jesus is speaking he says it is the spirit that quickeneth listen the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak unto you they are not just sounds that enter your ears they are spirit and life so while you are saying it is not for people like us we are the nobodies you are sending spirits you are sending instruments of creation you are sending messengers into your future programming war programming tragedies for you words are powerful god created the universe through words the only thing god did not create through words is man and he said it is just that he added with his hand again every other thing god said god saw god said god saw Number two, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. And then we'll go to Matthew 12, 37. Let me give us a verse ahead. Media, please give us quickly. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 and then Matthew 12, 37. It says, where the word of a king is, these are the scriptures that have blessed me and shaped my understanding of the power of the spoken word. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power except you are not a king but if you are a king and the bible says five as ten of revelations don't go there just write it it says that we have been made unto our god kings and priests a kingdom of priests and we shall reign. how do we reign remember i've taught you dominion mandate one of the ways that we legislate is through the power the our legislature through words for where the word of joshua selman is there is power where the word of anybody in koinonia who has an understanding that means if i see things happening in my life and i don't like what is the first thing to do please talk to me what is the first thing to do listen listen 
don't let anybody make you feel these things are basic no you didn't create the realm of the spirit you came from there anybody that is born and says i will not eat food the regular way i want to live my own way except you have caught the revelation of being a breatharian just know that you are going to die and die you will die and you will shrink and die like somalian children the authorized way is that you continue to eat where the word of a king is there is power matthew chapter 12 and verse 37 for by thy words thou shalt be justified like a court of law there is a spiritual court right the realm of the spirit works on a legal basis he said for by thy word as easy as salvation is it takes words to impart the life of christ to you the word is near thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith that we preach right romans 10 verse 8 to 10 for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned so when you are condemned who condemned you it's not really the, your neighbor no no you only attracted to your life what your words made i refuse to speak negative about myself i refuse it you will never hear me say anything sarcastic about myself i love myself I, I think it was school of ministry students i was teaching and i was telling them that these people that hang themselves it has been a wonder for me for many years even if i were not born again i won't hang myself no i love myself passionately hang myself no i may quarrel myself i may challenge my body to hang to go and stand on a rope and just tie myself no by your words you are justified by your words you are condemned isaiah 43 verse 26 then we go to numbers 14 28 and then just two more and we're done i just felt like speaking to us about words by the spirit of god because many believers are becoming careless we speak anyhow and we don't mind and we keep programming things that destroy us and then we say it doesn't matter it does matter brothers and sisters everybody who worried everybody who strives for mastery must do so lawfully we don't invent the rules we find them out it's an ancient part and we walk in it isaiah 43 and verse 26 it says the b part he said declare thou that thou mayest be justified how do you justify yourself so how does the sick justify himself I'm healed in the name of Jesus yes there might be pains but I decree and declare by his stripes I am healed now when you are saying this you see a lot of emojis look at you and say you are still a baby Christian until one day as matured as you think you are the devil is not a fool he will just allow pride to reach the highest point and sweep you one day in a way that you won't believe I speak over my life I speak over Koino koinonia is planted bible says, they that be planted in the house of the lord they shall flourish in the courts of our god even in old age he said they shall be fat and flourishing many of us used to do it before but now that we are becoming men of god we are throwing it away get back it is the childlike principle that has lifted ordinary people to become mighty if i tell you i don't speak the word i'll be lying i speak the word shabakatonia joshua selman you are blessed you are blessed i have a little blackboard with scriptures i recite those scriptures when i'm praying and god did extraordinary things through the hands of joshua selman so that handkerchiefs and aprons you don't wait till you see the result it is the words that command the results in the name of jesus i declare wealth and riches are in my house durable riches i decree and declare i shall not die I'm exempted from the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilence. People like Pastor Chris will say, keep, how, how does he say it? I, 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 keep, thank you. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Do it, oh. Do it like that. That's how it works. Believe me, that's how it works. You don't speak once and keep quiet. Listen, if I speak and I say in the name of Jesus, any spirit oppressing anybody, 
and people are outside there why can i not speak and say in the name of jesus everywhere my destiny helper is by the favor of god come that you saw it in the bible is no guarantee that it will happen in your life you must speak speaking is so important to the point that they had to shut the mouth of zechariah so that he would not speak nonsense if he had spoken, he would have altered John the Baptist's destiny. Numbers 14, 28. Very interesting scripture. I found this scripture during a retreat. Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, not as you desire quietly, as you have spoken in my ears, question where was the ears when you were speaking did the ears come near your mouth so while you were blasting and saying in the name of jesus i decree and declare i decree and declare oh grave where is your sting oh death where is this and that and you are prophesying and you are speaking and you are saying in the name of the lord jesus christ i have a job the lord grants me favor i may not have an uncle i may not have an auntie but in the name of jesus god raise helpers the bible says god is bringing his ears down and is hearing he says as i you have spoken in my ears so will do not to your neighbor to you to you to you isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 talking about the Lord it says he that confirmeth the word of his servant confirm meaning you speak and go let me tell you something and performeth the counsel of his messengers I want to teach you something about faith look up get any of my teachings on faith let me teach you something about faith you see pastor come satan has lived very long in this realm believers hear me let me speak to you satan has lived very long in this realm and he understands that man out of the assistance of the spirit has one limitation it's called our humanity and part of the components of our humanity is that we can be wary is that true remember the bible says the keeper of israel you know doesn't sleep doesn't slumber but men sleep and they can slumber are we together so this is what he does satan knows that your eyes your optical eyes your ears all of these things control your perceptions hence your convictions and so what he does is he he makes sure that perpetually before you is an awareness of your limitation are you hear what I'm saying now? Listen to me. So while you are praying, shakato kata kata, in the middle of hot prayer, the devil just comes in and says, where's the husband? And you would think it will enter you because you are in the spirit. It will just enter you and you say, oh God, am I not a beautiful lady? What is all this? You see, he has brought you back to his realm. The Bible says to walk in the spirit. Let me tell you what to do when that happens. That's a sign that your, a reaction is happening in the spirit. Every time you make such a proposition, please help that lady. That is a sign that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? I remember the time when God showed me the vision of Koinonia. We're about to start. I saw overflows. Remember? I, I said I saw people coming from other cities, other places. That was what I saw. As at that time, they had not even expanded CGC. I remember when I was praying and I was going to go and announce it. While I was praying, 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 there came that voice of doubt again. Don't think it doesn't happen to me. No. Most people will lie to you and say it doesn't happen. It's a lie. It happens to everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That while you are praying and the devil says you now want to disgrace yourself and God, you have not even gotten a venue they have not given you anything just because God showed you CGC you now want to make a stupid statement but the Bible says the spirit of faith has a character it speaks it doesn't wish and hide no 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 it speaks Kabakoto Sakatayada the spirit of faith it speaks it speaks 
oh let me let me play it safe when it, when the answer comes so that i won't be embarrassed question whoever takes the glory should take the shame every time you speak you put pressure on god's integrity lord i take your word and i shout it let them hear so that if it does not happen they, no 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 i can't give you the glory and take the shame many of us here we have been threatened by our physical circumstances into silence let the redeemed of the lord not we so say so say so i say it all the time i stand before my mirror joshua selman you are anointed you are rising from glory to glory superior dimensions of the anointing the favor of god is upon you sometimes i'm listening to koinonia message and while apostle is prophesying i'm there in my house kneeling down and listening because there are two different people i tell you and i listen i listen to apostle's message i listen to his message more than many of you here i can sit down and claim because i'm the one ministering and never be blessed from it there is no koinonia message i've not listened to not for clarity and administration God is my witness. I stand before him in your presence. Lift up your hands and I'm on my knees. Sometimes I play miracle service messages all while I sleep. And I have strange encounters. Don't think this thing we are just faking it. You don't walk this thing. It will never work. God is not a herbalist. Are we together? Sometimes I carry maybe Benny Hinn message or something. I'm playing and in the sleep it continues mysterious encounters when you wake up the devil will say pastor alpha you have been prophesying for two weeks you to reason and you say no sir this is what many of us do god but it's true now see if you if you don't stop getting embarrassed by the absence of your result you will never walk by faith are you hearing what i'm saying this shame shame believers hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit this shame consciousness of looking like a fool while awaiting your manifestation every miracle you see will risk taken by faith Lord I thank you nations are coming this ministry is rising oh you are talking too much thank God I'm not talking to you Lord you who I'm talking to you know me I, come on please don't go and shout in somebody's house it's not your house that's why the bible says, close your door enter your room close your door talk to your father there may not be money now but in the name of jesus father i'm a tither i'm a giver in the name of jesus i prophesy and while you are speaking the holy ghost just says dance for one hour aha uh aha -huh. uh -huh. the word has come and you put one hot Igbo high praise. Hot high praise. You may not know how to sing well. She can sing for you. You know those, those, those wonderful Igbo sisters. And you are dancing. Apostle, I can't dance. Dance anyhow. It's an instruction. You dance like David danced. And while you are dancing, all of a sudden, in that foolishness of faith, the God I serve, who takes the weak things, the foolish things, is working a miracle. You see, let me tell you this. Spiritual people must be childlike, not childish, childlike. We are too matured for results. All this big manism in the presence of God. No, sir. Are we together? Yes. You must speak. You get up and you have a bad dream. You are lying down and one spirit comes to sleep with you and oppress you and you get up and you say, Kai, this thing has happened again. No, sir. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I've been raised with Christ. And the devil says, didn't the spirit know while you're there? Just keep it. Keep at it. Satan is a coward. When he looks at, let me tell you something. When you are bold enough, you will resist him and I promise you he will flee. Is God speaking to us? We have been wasting words. The words that are supposed to be used for edification, we use that energy for gossip, for backbiting, for speaking words of unbelief. 
Okay. Pastor Alpha, that, that, that prayer we prayed that time, Shemi, you prayed it too. Let's be honest. Uh, not that I'm saying there's no faith to it. That's not what I'm saying, but is it really working? Just don't, you don't need to let nobody know. Just whisper it to me. That's unbelief. That thing you did is unbelief. Because you are trying to play games with God. Look, if you are in this thing, enter it and stay there and die in it. If you are not in it, then don't fake it. I'm a talking spirit. Truly I talk. Not talkativeness. Reduce half of the time we use jumping around and talking stories and talking nonsense. Go back to the secret place. Kalabota Skaliadash. This family is a family of peace. This is my husband. This is my wife. We love ourselves. No demon from anywhere is coming to scatter us. You call your child. Daddy he thinks you carry him. Say, no, no, no. I'm a priest now. This is not daddy. Bring your head. Let him just be playing around the head or cry. Leave, leave him there. Don't feel sorry for him. Pray. You get up and walk around your house. Dr. Paul Enenche was saying something. They are, the Lord's garden that they are building now. He says almost every day he goes there to speak and build. Just the zinking of it, the, the roofing of that place is six million dollars. Six million dollars to a 70,000 capacity seater. It's not just ritual. He will go there quietly in the night at his level and status. Jakatabada. Lord, you have given the instruction. Let those who will publish it come. The Lord gave the word. I pray over Koinonia. Lord, thank you. Financial help us. Don't just say favor is happening automatically. No. Lord, there are men and women who will bless me every service. I pray that prayer. I'll be honest with you. Lord, I am serving you in truth. And the Bible says, he that ministers to you in carnal things. Lord, I expect favor. I'm a receiver with thanksgiving. I receive grace. You have a troublesome tenant. Someone who is disturbing you and making life easy. Instead of fighting physically, I've taught you spiritual intelligence. Lord, this woman is making life uncomfortable for my children. In the name of Jesus, I make decree. I'm a man of peace. I declare my borders are peaceful. Even God, who quickened the dead and collect, magnetizes, attracts things that be not as though they were. This is not positive confession. This is creation. 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 We are going to speak. Are you ready to speak? Please rise up on your feet. Let's close for tonight. Rise up on your feet. Brothers and sisters, I want you to believe these things that I teach you. These are the keys. These are the keys that produce the results we desire. These are the keys. I want you to lift your voice in one minute. Our time is gone. Just lift your voice and thank the Lord for this word you have received tonight. Bless you, Pastor. for your power, for your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open your mouth in one minute. I know we're teaching on the gifts, but let's start with words. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to make decrees. Don't let the devil tell you anything. Open your mouth. Don't be silent. Make decrees. It says, declare doubt that you might be justified. Speak over the anointing in your life. Speak over your ministry. Are you prophesying? Speak over your marriage. Speak over your destiny, help us. 
cancel every negative word over your life nullify the scorching tongues of men pronouncements conclusions that have come by men thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies my God you anoint my head with oil you anoint me with favor you anoint me with grace my cup runneth over Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising Koinonia rises as a shining light ever brighter ever brighter to the perfect day no weapon fashion against me no weapon fashion against this ministry shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me shall fall in judgment declare declare i decree and declare i am planted in the house of god i flourish in the courts of my god i am fat and flourishing the abundance of the earth is delivered unto me everything works for my good everything works in my favor men arise to help me men arise to support what i represent in the name of jesus christ the lord makes me a blessing i remain a blessing i remain a blessing in the name of jesus rising ever brighter growing in the anointing growing in illumination ministry expanding on the left and on the right in the name of jesus christ the purposes of christ being established through koinonia i decree and declare all that god has given me is blessed I and the children that God has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I enjoy abundance. I enjoy supplies. Don't be tired. Don't let the devil deceive you that what you are saying is not sending a signal in the realm of the spirit. I'm fruitful on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of revelation is upon me. I have understanding. I have understanding. I have the mind of Christ. The love of God is at work in me. It's my year of triumph. I prophesy thanks be to God who causes me to triumph. It's my year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. No death. I have no business with death. In the name of Jesus Christ, I walk in dominion. I walk in grace. Katos kabaratoshiakata. Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. It's my confession. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. One more time. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. Just the voices. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. I know. One more time. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Listen, carry this attitude back. Don't allow those who speak and say you are talking, you are not serious. No worry. Thank God this race is personal. 
do whatever you believe and leave me alone if my talking is too childish and too, no problem let me continue being foolish and talk my way into my destiny listen hold on don't allow people hear me hear me koinonia don't allow anybody emotionally blackmail you when you are practicing the word of god don't allow anybody make you feel please what is all this childish thing this is how kings reign this is how people legislate i will never stop speaking hallelujah keep standing our time is gone please don't miss next week's ah uh, next week is um the graduation of our school of ministry students <laughs> hallelujah so it's going to be the week afterwards hallelujah before i take the altar call it's a very important announcement as you know our som graduation is one of the major ministry activities we're happy this is the fifth step of our students and we are very very proud to be releasing them the largest set so far praise the lord i want you is 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 another miracle service on its own um so i want you to come early please come if you can come uh, from 5 30 or 5 45 no problem so that we can start there's a lot to do there are many of them please please make sure that you are here and let's let's celebrate and let's trust god invite your loved ones those who are following listening from all over you can follow we we'll still those online you can still connect with us hallelujah now i have to do this i felt so bad because of the miracle service i couldn't make an altar call and i tell you i've been feeling guilty from sunday till now not not guilt like condemnation but it's just been in my heart i had to ask god for forgiveness i don't know how many times so we're going to make an altar call now if the lord started convicting you right from sunday and then with the balance of what has happened today there are people here inside outside overflow one two by the road those following online i want to give you an opportunity to make jesus lord of your life our time is gone so you will have to be fast and there are others who have one time surrendered their hearts to the lord but for some reason things went out of balance and you're saying lord i return sincerely and truly if you're coming from outside i want you to please run wherever you are inside here outside just make it here quickly let's honor them we have two minutes for this we have two minutes for this god bless you clear the way for them they are coming god bless you god bless you if you came for the miracle service and the lord told you we we're supposed to come out here for the altar call run quickly 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 there are people coming from outside encourage them and clear the way for them please quickly run to jesus our time is up our time is up overflow one two apostle i'm shy don't be shy hell is real run quickly quickly jesus is lord of your life he wants to make meaning out of your life and destiny and you are here you are saying apostle i gave my life to jesus one time keep coming god bless you run run and come apostle can i come and rededicate my life to christ you're more than welcome join them quickly join them quickly i'm not sure whether i'm born again or not you are invited join them and be sure join them and be sure come quickly hallelujah i was told i was born again when i was small join them join them you, you are obviously not born again please join them quickly join them quickly you don't impart salvation it's a personal affair join them quickly hallelujah thank you so much um ladies and gentlemen for this bold decision i know that many of you have come acknowledging the lordship of jesus i want to lead you in a prayer and i want you to believe lift your right hand and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is a miracle happening there are people coming from outside please can you run the sister coming run gentlemen please ushers clear the way for them so that they would hurry up say after me lord jesus i love you i believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i have heard your word i make you lord of my life i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare from tonight that i am a child of god the spirit of the lord 
is within me. I receive the grace to live a victorious life. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. Thank you for the grace for these ones to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will bless you, lift you, and honor you. In Jesus' name. Let today mark the beginning of a turnaround. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.